This is my table saw. It's in no way, shape, or form a fabulous table saw, but it does get the job done quite well. It's a hybrid table saw, which makes it quite small, and I really do enjoy that because it fits better in my small workshop. And on top of that, I added a sliding table to it, which really does make it more versatile, and I really enjoy that. But this saw does commit the cardinal woodworker's sin. It doesn't have a riving knife, and it doesn't have a blade guard. As a matter of fact, this saw never came with a riving knife, and on top of that, the mounts used for the safety guard don't actually go up and down, they're fixed mounts. Before we get started, here are some audio samples from this video. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I don't know what was going on, but I think the battery in my mic was dying. That or I just really am not good at using camera equipment. If you thought something looked really bad about that cut, it's because this is coming loose. All right, it seems to work, seems to fit quite nicely, but I need to find exactly where to put the holes. It'll be easier with the whole table saw removed. And anyways, I'm gonna have to drill and tap holes in there, so I'll have to remove it. So I'm gonna try to take everything apart.
And here's my logo, just to make sure you guys know I'm a serious YouTuber that has to plaster my logo on absolutely everything I make. So with the way this is set up here, I have a gap between this plate and the saw, which is normal because you'd want a clearance gap here. So I will have to make a spacer, and I did make a spacer. That way we'll space this out just the right amount. But this spacer actually has more than one job. Since I bolted this straight onto the cast iron, the cast iron is never going to be completely straight because it wasn't milled. This is just raw cast iron that this plate is bolted onto. If I had a milling machine, I would have just milled that cast iron flat, but I don't. So to compensate for that cast iron that's going to be a little bit crooked, this spacer isn't completely flat all around. I actually ground this, measured it with a pair of calipers, and slowly tweaked it to make sure that the riving knife is completely in line with the blade. I want it that there's about the same size gap all around. It's roughly 1 16 inch gap all around, which seems appropriate to me. I need to get a new set of Allen keys. Allen wrenches, I think they're called in English. Excuse. I need a new set of screwdrivers. Okay, so without the blade, not bad. So you can see it's bolted here, goes around. There is gonna be a little bit of slop. Honestly, if I was redoing this, I would use more than quarter inch steel here. I'd go probably for 3 8 and I thought this was gonna be enough, but I did remove quite a bit of material here, so there's only this much material. Like I think I mentioned earlier, since I have the holes tapped here, next time if I remake this plate for something thicker or to make it longer or something like that, I won't actually have to take the whole saw apart again, which is very nice. So for now, I'm just going to put this in and I might keep it or I might change it. I'm going to see. Okay, so here's a critical flaw in what I'm doing. This is the reason that this isn't a perfect project. It is kind of a crutch because I can't afford a better saw, but it does still make it safer. But here's a problem. So if the blade is down here, obviously the riving knife doesn't stick out, which is exactly what I want. If I put it up a little bit and I want to do a small partial cut, the riving knife is still not in the way. It doesn't protrude above the wood, but it also isn't there whatsoever right now. And you'll notice that only once the blade is about at this height would the riving knife start to actually be useful. And by this time, the blade is almost about an inch and a half out of the blade. So this isn't good, but there's no easy way around it because with the riving knife like this, once the blade is totally high, the, blade, the riving knife right now is actually a little bit higher than the blade, but I just have to lower it by like a tiny bit and it's fine. So the problem with that is really just that I can't make a riving knife that's always going to be the right size because if I, if I make it stick out more here, then I can't do a partial cut at this height. Okay, so here to install it, I have to cut the cover plate. And now I'm actually going to adjust the blade so that the blade runs true with the tracks here. You can easily make a jig that actually holds this in place, like this, and then you can just make it go back and forth. But ironically, I need a table saw to make that jig easily. So what I'm gonna do for today, and I'm just gonna put a piece of wood that happens to fit here and butt it up like this. Then I can take my measurements and compare it to the measurement here. And then I move four screws down there, move this around, tighten it, and make sure that it's all straight. It's a lot easier to do this once it's off the saw, but realistically, if I don't get it right, I can still do it while it's on the saw. When measuring here, the accuracy is probably within three, four thou that you're looking for. You don't really need to go more than that in my experience. I don't think I compromised the integrity of the table saw, but I did have to remove some material off the cast iron to fit the blade down. So really, the one problem with this saw is that you have to have the blade raised quite a bit for the riving knife to start to really engage. This is going to be fixed in my next video where I'm actually going to build a nice arm that's going to go on top to have the blade guard. So kind of one of those like blade guards used for dust collection, but I'm just going to be making one with a motor so you can go up and down and it'll be quite fancy and I think that's going to be really exciting and fun. I'm also redoing all the electronics, which is going to fix this problem is what I'm trying to say. That's actually my next video, so please do subscribe to watch that. 
But for now, this is working fine. It's definitely better than it was without the riving knife, but it isn't quite as good as having a riving knife from factory. But it does work quite well. Uh, I fixed a fence and I shimmed it with some brass so it would slide better and so it would actually be straight. Um, so this is just because my fence is cheap. You could buy a whole new fence for about $400 or so, which would work way better than this. And I don't want to invest this much in the table saw because I'll just buy myself a European table saw when I have the money to. So if I invest a ton here, it, it just doesn't really make sense for me. So do subscribe to watch a whole table saw build with the, the overhead arm and the aluminum blade guide and everything. But that's going to be probably in about two weeks from now. Until then, you can also follow me on Instagram. I always show myself on Instagram as I'm working on it. So you can follow me there.